The live letter from the producer has just aired as a part of the 14 hour live stream and I'm here as is tradition here to give you the details in a super condensed form. If this content helps you out, it would make me super happy if you considered slamming a amazing set of Criterion Dungeon content on that like button and cat dadding that subscribe button. The live letter started off with a review of patch 6.2 content that we already have and then they went into patch 6.25 later. Timestamps are going to be in the description as always. The live letter discussed the Barbaricha Extreme trial which was introduced with patch 6.2. They discussed at length the design behind the fight intended to be a faster high paced tempo fight rather than be around pub problem solving and puzzles like in other fights. I love this personally a lot as a healer honestly and I kind of hope that this isn't just like seen as like a completely separate design because I think that the fusion between the two could be really cool. They then discussed the savage tier and how Lahambre appears in it stating that they didn't have much of a chance to explore his character as much as they wanted in the past. Then they spoke about releasing Savage a week later and that it was an overwhelmingly positive response, which I wholeheartedly agree. It was such a relief to me when I could see that be like that delay. It let me get through the store, let me get prepared for the raid, and so much. But they did cite a concern that even I myself brought up before when we were first hearing about it about the crafting gear not selling well. But they did look at the data and it showed actually more crafted gear was sold, which is a pleasant surprise and so they are thinking that this delay is going to continue going forward they might tweak it a bit but going forward it's a positive they then went into island sanctuary where they raised that many players decided to optimize the way of doing tasks oops Definitely not one of those players. Yoshi P then raised that a lot of feedback is that players want more freedom to design and customize their island and to really have more individuality and are trying to do stuff with like having garden housing items be placeable on their island but don't have an exact release date time for that yet. Fashion accessories and their emotes like the umbrella dance emote they mentioned that there was a trade-off of being able to use fashion accessories where actions like emotes can't be used at the same time since they use the same system memory and will try and improve this going forward. They then decided to discuss glamours like discussing the brand new titania phase crown weapon glamours that they spoke on since introducing the ultimate weapon glamours they've really been trying to evolve their quality of effects for new gear which has improved a lot and it, i can say that the current fae weapons i have a bunch of them the bard bow is amazing the scholar weapons amazing it's just a really beautiful set i think this absolutely knocks the <laughs> fudge out of the last ultimate weapon i think that these are so pretty but the problem is that now some players are asking to disable gear effects, which obviously is going to be something we've seen crop up before. Like we wanted people to say have the option to disable relic weapon effects. Like last relic tier, you were actually able to get like the unaffected final version of the weapon, which was very nice. But they also raised that other players are raising wanting to see the ability to die specific elements of armor. Oh, hey, fellow Warframe players. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of funny because that's something that I've wanted to do, but never have really raised. Actually, Guild Wars 2 does that too. I should really be playing more Guild Wars 2. They then went into patch 6.25 news, which is being released on Tuesday, October 18th, and so only 11 days away. Slated for November 1st, we're going to be looking at getting a brand new North American data center, which is going to introduce the data center Dynamis, which is very relevant in Endwalker's story, and then four new worlds with the housing system already accepting draws on November 5th and so you have four days to make 15 million kill. Is that possible? So, there's got to be someone who's figured that out. Maybe crowdsourcing all the guild to someone. It's kind of brought to my mind of how many of you are going to be jumping in there for a large house and do the mad guild grind because like you actually probably have like an insanely good shot of getting the dream large plot of your dreams if you do. Just saying. However, all of us others got some really good news as they are looking at adding new housing plots in general. Time frame, however, is currently unknown though. Next up, they announced that there will be a fan fest in 2023 that will actually be held in person, which is going to be really, really freaking cool to say the least. I've never been to one, and so just hearing about this is like, oh shit, that's cool. They then went into showcasing the winners of the gear design contest and showed off two different Reaper weapons and then two different Sage weapons. Honestly, these are pretty freaking amazing. I am 
probably of all of these, I am the biggest fan of the Reaper size with the lantern on the back. Like, oh my god, that's outrageous. I don't know, that's giving me those like Elder Quarter vibes. I, I, I'm living for that aesthetic. I think that's an aesthetic we don't see nearly enough, and I am so... I love it. They then announced that the Halloween event All Saints Wake is coming on October 19th, so the day after we're getting the patch, which I'm personally really excited for. The glamours from the last event were absolutely spectacular, and so hoping for something crazy here. And that really brings us to the conclusion of it. So I'm going to be going and just adding the job changes that they were talking about here. It's in a separate video, but I figure it's short enough that I can add it here. So basically they are looking at either like removing or reducing the range DPS tasks because they made the hit box is so big and so they don't think that it's really fair to keep the DPS difference as large as it is between range DPS and melee DPS because they made it easier to keep the melee uptime. They also cited that there will be only number passes coming in patch 6.25 as well as coming in patch 6.28. Those are going to be number passes but they said that action changes can be expected for patch 6.3 so that's probably going to be larger like ability functional changes so here's keeping my fingers crossed that the machinist is going to end up being okay fingers super crossed for that that happens anyhow that brings us to the actual conclusion of the video and i hope that everyone is super excited for the patch as i am i wanted more criterion dungeon information but i guess that we got enough already and that they're just waiting to release it on the 18th and so that's fair but anyhow, I hope that everyone has an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, if you want to help me out and this video helped you, I would super appreciate and be really happy if you considered dropping a beefy Criterion Dungeon on that like button and cat dying that subscribe button. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and I hope you have a beautiful day.